All right, welcome back to the Hunt the Front podcast. We're uh, trying something a little different today. Uh, Jonathan and Joseph are both tied up with uh, other stuff going on, so it's just me, Joshua, and Jesse, and we've brought on uh, brought on a guest with it uh, being the uh, the big crate race, crate racing USA winner shootout finale this weekend at Southern Raceway in Milton, Florida. We've uh, brought on, I guess maybe you'd say one of the uh, the big name drivers as far as the crate late model world is considered coming down. We got uh, Tennessee's Matt Henderson on the uh, on the show today to talk a little bit about some, about uh, the event this weekend, uh, the Crate Racing USA Winter Series, and uh, crate racing in general. So, uh, Matt, we appreciate you coming on. Um, you know, obviously coming off a, a big win at Volusia last month and and running well with the Crate Racing USA Winter Shootout uh, Tour uh, Winter Series deal they got going on. How you how you feeling coming down to Southern Raceway this weekend to to wrap up the Winter uh, Challenge Series? Well, thanks for having me and. Uh... I, I feel good. I've I've been to Milton a few times, so I've not been to that area or the track in in several years. So I'm kind of looking forward to coming back. It's definitely a, a unique uh, track. I think most guys when they come down, we we grew up here. Obviously, uh, our our family racing and Jesse, and and so we know a lot about it. But I know a lot of guys. It's it's kind of a unique place coming to. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, but you're coming here on a on a on a bit of a high note, obviously, I think second in the winter uh, challenge points deal, and uh, like I said, uh, uh, coming off that win at Volusia, which seemed, you know, obviously the the Sunshine Nationals there with the Great USA compared with the the World of Outlaws uh, Super Late Models running as well. I'd imagine that was a pretty big win for you. Um, I know you won a lot of big races, twenty thousand at Cochrane and, and a few other big shows, but was that a big one for you? And and kind of a nice one to get there with the the crowd that was there and you know the competition in the crates but also just the amount of attention on that event uh it, it was really cool because of the amount of attention obviously but the uh just just the situation i found myself in i went from having a, a top tier well-funded crate ride to uh that deal folding up shop and uh not having a ride last year that i really wanted to, to take part of full time and then getting back in this stuff and then going out pretty early for us. We've not, we've not been together long and getting a big win like that, uh, you know, just solidified. Okay. I can still do it at a big level. You know, uh, you, I don't care how many big races you've won. And I don't think even the super late model guys would tell you that that doesn't creep in, uh, you know, man, maybe I just don't have it anymore, you know? So, uh, I was not in a good place last year mentally as far as getting in the race car just kind of defeated before i got there and uh so it was good to be back on top there you go and um someone who can relate to uh kind of making a name and 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 um you know showing out at, at volusia jesse uh let you chime mm -hmm. in here we, when you swam the gator pond i'm talking about it. it's it's oh, similar I was like, right hell i've never even raced at volusia <laughs> uh, hey, anyway. hey I, I made it i made a name for myself at volusia just ain't the way that you guys are making your names at volusia <laughs> <laughs> that's where he earned his nickname gator bait <laughs> so, um but yeah Je jesse anything you can thoughts um you know can relate to what he was talking about there with the the mentally you know trying to get past that part mentally thinking you can still do this um you know still got it uh, well, can you relate to that a little yeah, bit yeah i can relate to it because i'm just trying to figure out if i ever had it and will i ever <laughs> get it kind of thing I, I haven't quite made it to do i still have it you know i'm i'm still just trying to get it in the first place you know what i mean no, you do good, man. I've I've been proud of you, especially uh I think I think Joe was racing. We raced at um Magnolia and you raced six oh two down there. And I think you whipped them both knots. Yeah, listen, I, I, I was good in six oh two. I you know, six oh fours I I'm struggling a little bit. Or actually I'm good at Magnolia. Like even the six oh fours I went there and competed. Uh but yeah, that's about the highlight of my career there, Matt, is uh Oh, uh, winning two races at Magnolia back to back. Well, winning anything at Mag I don't care if it's a hot shot. Winning at Magnolia is tough. That that track itself is tough. Yeah. So uh, I was proud of you. I, I <laughs> thought you were doing good. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, definitely uh, that would be one of the highlights uh, Jesse has had so far. Obviously, uh, if things work out, uh, Jesse will be looking for another one with uh, you know a good run this weekend at, at Southern Raceway. You bring up a good point there, Matt and, and and Jesse. The differences in late models and you know we our view some of our viewers on YouTube here might not understand the difference between a, a 602, 604, and Super. 
Um, obviously, man, I know you've, I think you, you used to do some super racing, um, back mm -hmm. in the day. And I know you've kind of been in crates a while now, but the difference between the divisions and kind of how you drive it, um, as a driver from a 602, I assume maybe you've done some 602 stuff, um, along um, the way. Wow. Yeah. Okay. What's the, you know, how talk, talk a little bit about that, you know, that the difference in driving these things when you go from a 602 to a 604 and, and uh, a super late model for some of the folks who may not be as, um, you know, as well understand and, and is in, in the sport as we are to really know it. Um, you know, what, what's, how can you kind of explain those differences to those folks? Well, set up and just making mistakes, uh, as a driver is so much more crucial in like a 602 because you have to, you almost have to be perfect. If you're racing guys that are perfect, you, you have to be perfect almost every lap because you don't have enough motor and uh, even suspension. You know, we don't have as good shocks and stuff in 602s to make up the difference. So you have to, you have to hit the, the right line. You have to be perfect every lap. 604 is not as bad about it. You can you can kind of get by with some stuff, but you still got to be pretty good. In a super, you can kind of screw up a little bit, but the motor will let you get back out of it. You know, you won't lose a half a second a lap. You may lose a tenth, tenth and a half, two tenths. So uh, they're all difficult in their own way. You know, obviously super late models is where the cream rises to the top. So uh, you know, to get on a, a high level in supers takes a lot of skill. But man, I'm telling you. 604 racing and crate racing in general, whether it's 602 or 604, it can be tough because, I mean, you just, every lap, you have to be perfect, you know? Yep. Jesse, you find that uh, pretty, uh, oh, like that or uh, like agree one, with that? Yeah, 100%. Like, they, I think, like, with the 602, 604s, it's all about, like, momentum and because mm -hmm. you ain't got no horsepower to get you out of a bind and just, you know, like he said, like if you mess up in the crates, like the guys behind you, if they don't mess up, they're going to be on you in just a snap of a finger because uh, you got to get it wound back up again and get your momentum back going. If them guys don't mess up, they'll drive by you. And I think that's what yeah. makes hell. I think it makes crate racing harder in that in that aspect, because if you mess up at a super, you can get back off the corner, put her on the floor, get her pointed. You know, it's, the other guy's going to have trouble getting by you. But you know, crate racing, it's, it's, I do agree. It's, it's, uh, it's, 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 when you mess up, it is, it's hard to get back going again, I guess. Yeah. And that's one thing. Uh, the other thing about crate racing that I see, and obviously not from the driver's point, but just the, uh, the, the viewer, um, is there's really, really even, right. And I think that was the purpose of crate racing when it came out along with being a little bit more affordable was to even the playing field, so to speak. And I, I feel like, you know, when you go to a crate race, you've got, you know, I think supers are, are, are highly competitive, obviously, but when you go to a crate race, man, there's a lot of times there's, you know, there's, there's 30 cars that could win, right? If we, yeah. we were at all for the power Memorial and it's like, you know, almost everyone here is, is capable of winning or at least running, uh, up front. And you saw some, you know, some guys, some super guys struggle to make the show, uh, down there, um, that were dropping down to run the power Memorial. And that, that's not uncommon. I mean, Joseph runs, wins a heat race with Lucas Oil series a couple weeks ago at all tech. And then, you know, runs probably was, you know, qualifies third, runs second in his heat race and really was kind of lucky to run second on speed. Um, talk a little about that, Matt, like how competitive the crate late model, uh, specifically this crate race in USA stuff is uh, these days with, with how many guys are doing it and how many of them are, are really good drivers. Well, the cruiser, the crate race in USA series, man, it's the, it is the Lucas Oil of crates. I mean, it's where the, the big dogs come to, eat, you know, so Anytime you unload with Crate Racing USA, I mean, it's you can you can feel like you had a pretty good lap and be 11th in your group. You know, uh, we were at East Bay and uh, I was with Ashton. Ashton set fast time, felt like I kept pretty good pace with him in our qualifying. He comes up to me in the infield and says, "How were you?" And I said, "Well, I felt like I kept a good pace with you." And they said, "You're on pole, so I've got to be pretty good." I was 11th, you know, and I felt like I was pretty good. That's just how close it is. And we, the top 13 or 14 was a 10th, uh, 18 hundredths uh, separating, you know, a 10th and 8, 8 hundredths. So it was just, you know, it gets so competitive, you know. And then when you get us all racing, you're on top of each other the whole time. You don't get to pull away. So, you know, that's that's goes right back to you got to be perfect, you know. And you can hear guys moving around and trying to get by you, being a leader 
is really hard in this series because you know you got guys searching and you can hear them moving around. You'll hear somebody on the outside. And uh, but you know, I enjoy I enjoy doing the crate race in USA stuff because um, you know you can go to some crate races and feel like you're not going to be done good on tech and and some situations may arise that you don't feel is fair. And the cruiser guys, man, they are they're the same to everybody. If one guy don't like them, nobody else does either. And uh, they're hard on us. But, you know, I know when I get beat, I know I got beat by something that's legal. Right. Yeah. And that's important. That's one reason, you know, um, I, I think we feel the same way. Our race team, like you, you go to a, yeah. a crate racing USA event, you feel like you're going to be treated, you know, fairly and everyone's getting the same treatment and it adds just, just having that name on it as a, and knowing they're there doing the, the tech and, and, and race direct and everything definitely, I think gives a lot of, you know, comfort to drivers yeah. knowing what they're going to get when they show up. Absolutely. Listen. I know Listen. that, you know, whenever there's an unsanctioned, uh, you know, crate race, I, we're, I mean, we ain't doing a whole lot of crate race anymore, but like in the past, it's like, if it's an unsanctioned crate race, it's kind of like, uh, you know, like, you don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> we're, yeah. We're not like excited to go to it because of those exact reasons. Like, you just don't know, but I, but with crate racing, like they they got a rule book, and I I agree, like they they treat everyone fair, and you know, hell, they get onto us just about every time we're at a racetrack. So about <laughs> well, you those, even pushing those stuff. limits, I mean, just small <laughs> stuff. But yeah. uh, but they do it with everybody though, and 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 you got to you respect that, and that makes you want to race with them. Yeah, yeah. That's, you talk that's uh, the way. Yeah. yeah, you talk mad about the how competitive it is. Um, I kind of leave my my next question. We're talking about the. This this point still, and I know it's not the you know it's kind of a mini series, right, with the the win, uh, winter uh, shootout um, series that Crate Racing USA puts on. But you're coming in um, after a little bit of a setback. I think the the last night at East Bay, you're coming in. I think if this is great, third in points um, yeah, behind uh, Will Rowland, Tyler Millwood. You got Mario Gresham and Richie Stevens right there as well in the top five. Um, you know, thirty Will Rowland has a little bit of lead, thirty four over Tyler Millwood, and then you're uh, forty out of the lead there, but still you know, a little mess up or anything could happen, you know, how are you feeling? Do you feel like you still got a shot at it? Uh, you know, if things go your way, Will has a little bit of a slip up or something to maybe get in there well, and uh, get that title. Well, I feel like, uh, I feel like I've been to Milton and I've raced there, even though it was years ago. So I've got that uh, confidence there because that place drives very different. And if you've not been there, I feel like you're going to attack it. Not necessarily the correct way. And then, um, you know, I was in the lead when I had my run in at East Bay. You know, I overheated the last night and chose to pull off, save the equipment. So, um, you know, I was in the lead then. So something like that could happen going down to the wire. I really just want to race hard the final weekend, try to bring home the $10,000 check and let the points fall where they fall because, it only being, it's originally, I think, nine or ten knots, and then we lost two. We rained out one at uh, Belusha, and then 411 was a scratch because of weather, too. So um, we lost two of the knots, and you just can't afford to have a bad night. And kudos to Will and his team. Um, they, they won the ice bowl, so they had the lead there, and they've been consistent, you know, top nine, six, five. You know, they've, they've been in the mix every event. So you can't really, uh, you know, you can't fault that. You just can't have a bad night and it'd be such a limited series like that. So um, those guys did their job. So we're going to go give it all we got. And uh, I'm sure we'll end up racing hard. Me and Millwood have swapped quarter panels and beat on each other uh, a couple of times, just racing incidents. And then uh, me and um, Will Rowland have rubbed on each other at Volusia, the race I won, me and him just absolutely tortured each other uh every lap just because we were both on the same tire and we knew whoever got in front when that 21 went away of the leader whoever got in front whoever won that battle was winning the race so we fought from lap one we cut through uh he started sixth and i started eighth i think or sixth and fourth. I don't remember, but we cut through traffic together and raced each other hard because we knew that was the race, you know, if it fell to the tire. So, and you know, it's been a fun deal. Yeah. Um, talk about this, this winter series, uh, you know, obviously crate racing USA does a lot of different stuff. They sanction, you know, all kinds of weekly racing from street stocks to crates and some modifieds and everything. 
Um, then they have their uh, dirt late model, crate late model touring series, right, during the season. But also they do this off-season deal or winter series thing. And a lot of people, you know, say, talk, you know, in the sport, you hear, oh, we need an off-season and all this off-season, you know, early season racing's bad and everything. But, you know, talk about it from your perspective. You know, you get these handful of races at, at pretty good tracks, some big, big shows with the, the Speed yeah. Week stuff and the Ice Bowl. And, you know, we're trying to build this deal here down at Southern Raceway to make it a part of it. You know, how cool is it to have, or, or I mean, obviously I, I assume you like it that you're, you're running the series to have this series as an option in January and February um, when there's, you know, not a whole lot of racing going on and to, when you're winning with a new team, perhaps to get dialed in um, here during the, what is usually uh, considered the off season. Well, I have, uh, you know, I, I have the opinion that if you don't like the off season racing, take your off season, do it. <laughs> you, don't have to, you don't have to come race. I mean, right. it's fine. <laughs> Uh, yeah. you know, uh, but I feel like, um, uh, I feel like this deal gives the racers like, uh, there's a guy coming from, uh, I think, I don't know if he's from South Dakota or North Dakota. Yeah. And he's headed to Milton, Florida. Yeah. So <laughs> if, you know, if you look like that, these guys just want to get out of the snow and they get to come race. And I mean, that's just a cool opportunity. Like when we left for Florida. It was snow, ice. I mean, just it was a mess up here. So why wouldn't I want to be in Florida to get to do some racing and get out of that? You know, yeah. so um, I'm just of, of the opinion that let people race if they want to race, and if you don't want to, stay at the house. Yeah, exactly. That's, That's kind of look at it. Yeah, and, and I mean, the folks at the house like to watch racing too. So those who want to run, get you give them something to watch. I guess. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you kind of, um, you mentioned it before, but you're, you're kind of with a new team and, and, um, I know I, I talk a little bit about that, who you're racing with, what the, the chassis, you know, brand is the supporters behind you. What, what's your, what's your team situation right now? Um, you know, going into the 2024 season here. Yeah, see, we don't, we, we've not even really considered this starting our season yet. You know, I'm saying the season starts in March, so, uh, we're still freshening up. We've got three CVR cars. We've, we've got. Uh, all three are race ready right now, but we've been working on that while we go race. We come back, get this car that's got the hood off right behind me, get it race ready and then work on the cars on each side of it. So uh, I'm driving for Rusty Webb, uh, who I met when I was driving for CBR. He, he owns all CBR cars and uh, I met him and, and we've talked about me driving for him for quite a bit, but I've always had something going on or he's always had a driver. And then um, he he got an opening to where uh, his driver went uh, to another opportunity. So we put that deal together late last year, and we won the first night out. And so that was exciting. And then we didn't have any luck after that and then uh, started uh, at Talladega this year for the Ice Bowl. And we've had speed everywhere we went. So... Um, just got a lot of good people that help contribute here at the shop. We've got a, a full-time guy that is really good for us, uh, Daryl, and then uh, Rusty and me are here every day trying to put in work, and then uh, Gary and Jordan help us. And then we, we've we added Vision Wheel, which was my sponsor with CVR. They actually followed me to this deal, and uh, so I've got Vision Wheel and Discount Tire with me. Um, I've got Tennessee Shine Company, you know, a little bit of moonshine, uh, local uh, shine company here that uh, Old Smokey, you know, they they, they compete with them and uh, they're all good friends, actually. So uh, Tennessee Shine's on board and then CNC Specialized Pressure Washing, Crate Engine Technology, Mark Tudor Racing uh, does all of our shocks and uh, it's kind of our race engineer. You know, when I got questions, I give him a call and Dyer Trucking. And then the main sponsor is RW Properties, which is Rusty's personal. Uh, he, he has a lot of commercial properties. He leases and rents in the East Tennessee, uh, Knoxville area. So that's the main sponsor, you know. But, uh, you know, just got a, a lot of good people that help us out. And you, you know how it is. I know you guys definitely know doing it at the level you do it. There is no way to do this without these people. So, you know, you got to appreciate them and show them love when you can. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. One thing, um, so you kind of, you mentioned it, you, you know, you talked about you were in the CVR, I think house car not too long ago. Um, and you know, now you're with this team there. One thing I find interesting about you is you've been, you've been around this sport for a long time as a driver. And, you know, I think you've proven that a good driver 
can, you know, in the right situation can find, you know, can, can get rides, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I think a lot of times as a, you know, someone who doesn't come with their own funding, whether it's, uh, you know, family backed or, you know, somehow land a big sponsor that goes with you everywhere. Um, you know, like, like you kind of get the sense that this sport is getting away from that where you can't really make it. And yet I see some guys like yourself who yet, you know, you, you might bounce around a little bit here and there, but you seem to seem to always land somewhere and, and kind of, you know, how have you navigated those waters as a driver? Um, you know, and how have you managed to kind of always seem to be in good equipment? Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, whenever, you know, as, as, throughout your career here. Well, the, the, I, I make, I make friends, uh, you know, like all of my opportunities are, are from friendships, you know, uh, there's nobody profiting off putting me in the race car. So it, it, it becomes about relationships and I'm, I've just made relationships with some good people. Uh, you know, I, I ran the Powell Memorial last year for the David Showers family. I was with CBR when they bought, they bought a fleet of CBRs. They, they ended up with four of them. Uh, between them and some friends so uh you know all my opportunities have really come from just relationships and and uh hopefully most people would think i've been good to people you know so uh most of the opportunities have come that way and then like a deal like this i've never had an opportunity like i have right now i've got uh three cars race ready and motors if i burn something down i've always like even the cbr house car we had one car and we had one motor and you better not tear it up, you know, because yeah. that, that takes you out. You know, even though we could fix the cars, we had the tubing in the rack. We couldn't put our customers off to put our race car together. So, you know, it, it just it wasn't a it was not a race team. It was a race shop that had a race car, you know. So um, that's that was, you know, a challenge for it. But this is all about the performance of these three cars, you know, just just go try to win races and he gives me everything I need. If I can show him that something will help us improve, he'll find a way to get it, you know? So, uh, this is the best opportunity I've had, you know? Um, that's, that's, that's pretty good. seems like a pretty good deal. And I've, I've always wondered, like you are always coming to the racetracks and there's just no telling what you're going to be in. Cause you're just, you know, you've been fortunate and you're always able to get a ride, you know? So, yeah. and that's impressive. Uh, but what I want to know is, is it by just pure chance that you seem to be sticking with CVRs or as far as the chassis brands, I just feel like you've been in CVR equipment for quite a few years now, to my knowledge, yeah. so that's all you've been running. So is it just by pure chance or is it a preference, uh, for you uh i i really like the longhorn stuff and uh I, you know 2015 i think the first time i raced with uh joseph i was in a rocket so uh you know i've, I've been in all of it but i i can make speed in cvrs uh i believe in the product you know and i have a personal relationship there so it does. I won't say that it's a preference because I I would I would be fine with running a Longhorn or whatever. But you guys know. I mean, I, I'm sure you would go where you get help. You know, and and CBR is in Lenore City, Tennessee. Uh, you know, my hometown is Loudon. That's ten minutes apart. There's just uh, there's a lot of added benefits to having somebody local and somebody that. You know, I can get on the phone and say, you know, drop ship me a spindle. I got to have it, you yeah. know, or th this car, I I've got something goofy going on. What do you think it is? You know, so there, there's just added benefits of, of having that relationship. But, uh, you know, they're all they're all tubing and they'll all go around the racetrack. So right. it's just it's not really a preference of mine. But, you know, I do I do enjoy the relationship. Right. You, you kind of bring up a, a point I wanted wanted to ask you about, or, or that leads me to a point. Um, it's interesting to me, and I know, I know you follow super late model racing. I see you, you know, commenting about it here and there on, on Facebook and everything. So I know you, you're following it, and you're, I'm sure, well aware of it, in the super late model ranks, especially, you know, at the highest level, it, it feels like you're either in a Longhorn or you're in a Rocket or, you know, that I mean, that's it. I mean, I, I mean, I know there's some other cars coming on. Bloomquist has, there's, you know, McDowell and, um, some of those guys in Bloomquist chassis and I know, um, you know, there's some other chassis trying to make their way, but it, it feels like you really have to be, or at least the way guys gravitate to those chassis that you kind of have to be in one of those to be competitive. Whereas in crate racing, you've got CVR, you've got, um, you've oh, got yeah. Savage, you've got Capital. DMF, you've got Capitals really good where they're kind of, their super program isn't as good, but they're, 
um, crate program's good, track star in Mississippi, and I'm sure we could go all around. What as a guy who's again really knowledgeable about this sport and and understands it better than than most folks, um, or you know has more way a lot of experience in it. Why is that? Like, explain that to you know uh, some of our viewers who may not be as again as a, in, in involved in this and uh, seen it, and why we see Longhorn or Rocket at the national super late model level, but when you get down to crates, it's like there's so many options and they're they're all winning uh, yeah. a lot of times, or, or you don't necessarily have just one winning. Why why do you think well, that is? Well, I think I think in the super late model world, especially the top level, you see Davenport win in it, and you go, man. I, I'm not going to outwork him. I'm not going to. I'm not going to have many opportunities out driving. It can be done, but I'm going to have to be perfect. I've got to have what he's got. I, let's take that out of the equation. And then you see Rocket One gets on a roll, and you start seeing the Rockets on the spoilers again. And um, it's so monkey see, monkey do because I feel like you go, I can't search for something and keep going to these races and getting my butt handed to me. I've got to have what they have. And in crate racing, we've got what we've got, and we just go to work until we figure it out. We don't, it's not costing me $10 a lap to run my motor, you know, and I'm not melting three tires every time I go on the racetrack. So the, uh, the ability to work on your program and make what you have fast is still there in crate racing where, I mean, if I was going super late model racing today, I would have three Longhorns behind me or three Rockets behind me because I'm not I'm not going to fight that battle, you know, so um, I just feel like that's more of it is, you know, what that guy has is, is winning and you don't want to fight against it. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very interesting way you put it there. I like the I mean, the monkey see monkey do, I think applies. And, um, you know, I, I really hadn't thought of that way. The you know, we got what we got. We're going to work, make it work and you go to work to make it happen. That's uh. You know, I like that I that mean, aspect of it. It makes sense. I mean, because a lot of the crate programs, like they can't just say, "Oh, hey, a Longhorn's winning. I got to go get one." It's like, no, you, like you said, yeah, I got what I got. We, we need to we need to move some bars or lengthen them or shorten them or figure something else yep. out, and make it get around the racetrack. Cutting well, the, you know, yeah, well, I, yeah. <laughs> well I, we're not going to do that. We would have something destroyed. <laughs> yeah, I, I've done it. I've done it, and it worked really good. And I've done it, and I had to send the chassis back to the jig. It's like, sorry guys, uh, I wasn't as smart as I thought I was. Yeah, we would be. Well, that's that fine. Page. We're not going to turn Jesse loose with a torch and a God, welder uh, for that very reason. <laughs> but, uh, maybe one day. Um, you, you so you kind of on a on a personal level for you as a driver and your career. Um, when you look at the the crates and supers, do you you know do do you see one thing I'm very interested in and part of the reason we started our series is we don't want, we're trying to keep a path for guys on the regional level and even weekly level, then find a way to get to the regional level and grow, whether it's they, they find rides or they get sponsorship or they just get better and they have the funding to go to these races. Do you feel like there's, there's a path for a guy like yourself, if the right things happen that you could, you know, still like make it to the top of this sport, you know, or someone that's just getting in it like you, or do you feel like there's too much, like a gap between the crates and the, the the regional stuff to be able to one day say, I'm going to run Lucas Oil one day or compete with those guys, whether it's running the full series or something like that, or World of Outlaws. Do you feel like there's a path for a guy that's running crates like yourself to, to eventually get there? I think there's a huge opportunity um, uh, to, to grow and, and to get to that level. Uh, I don't feel like I would, I don't feel like I would take an opportunity to, uh, to, to get there there i don't want to be a small fish in a big pond anymore i feel like i've put my dues in man and i i've i've worked hard to be good at what i'm good at and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna jump into that uh into that water anymore i had an opportunity to drive a super a couple of years ago and uh you know we set fast time for the kyle larson race at uh bulls gap we set fast time on a fifty thousand win at smoky mountain and uh, we were really good, but it's just not. We didn't have a setup uh, for the car. We took a what what primarily was a crate car with a CBR and put a, a, a Durham motor in it. And you know we got schooled a lot. You know the car wasn't that good, but we had speed in the mud. You know, and I just realized that I don't have the technology that I felt like I needed to be competitive and. I didn't have anybody to lean on. There was no other super late model CBR car, you know, 
And, uh, you know, we, we did, we did good and we ran good with the world outlaws and with the Kyle Larson stuff, we did good, but that's just, there's such a gap between crate racing and that. And, um, you know, when I go to the racetrack, let's say the Powell Memorial and there's 80 cars, 15 or 20 of those teams, your all's team included has really talented crew members. They got their stuff together. Okay. If you go to the world 100, you have very few weekend warriors that are there that are just there to make laps. So you've got 80 to 100 teams that are well prepared and have people that's in the know what's going on. And if you don't, if you don't have that to bring to the table, you don't need to step into that world. I can survive on my own in crates, and that's where I'm comfortable being, you know. But I do think your series, um, you know, and some other feeder series give guys opportunity to, to get them a super late model engine and go race those series, get their feet wet and maybe uh, provide them an opportunity to prove themselves a little bit. I, I like your series for that because the guy's not going to go broke doing it. Uh, all the races pay good and they compete with the national series on some dates to where those guys are gone and somebody is going to have a good paycheck, you know? So I feel like, uh, the Hunts Front Series does give a unique opportunity to grow and to to feed the sport, you know, and that's what that's what we've been missing is a guy can race crates his whole life, but he can't get super late model. He can't break that door down. And um, because, you know, a lot of places don't have super late model series anymore. You know, the South is different, but, you know, they don't have a good super late model series that doesn't pay 3000 to win. Who can run a super late model for that? So, you know, the guy's like, well, I'm going to race my crate for 800 to win because I'm still losing money, but I'm not losing that much money, you know? Yep. So you guys, you guys gave these guys a unique opportunity to where they can do it and not completely go broke doing it. So, um, you know, and I appreciate anybody that's willing to do that because the time it takes to put a series on to promote these shows. Now you got your hunt front TV. you got the deal. You all, uh, you know, were really the first people to ever do it to have that following that you guys built um you have to love the sport to want to get involved because i would not want the headache of dealing with racers and whining <laughs> and complaining because i'm the one calling adam stewart and being like hey man what in the heck are we doing right here you know and i wouldn't <laughs> right. want to be the one answering the phone for me so i know the other racers that are worse than me you don't want to be a part of it so you guys have to love it yeah, um, that's uh, that's been fun that uh, adjusting to that side of it. But uh, I, I try to pr approach it where you know I don't I don't race anymore, me personally. But I used to race, and I obviously raced. Uh, you know, went with Joseph and these guys with the Hunt the Front team. So I, I understand when a, how much how much uh, how, how important it is to the racers, and how much passion there is for it, and how you can get really aggravated about things. So um, you know, I try to. Tolerate, and I don't say tolerate, but I, I, I'm trying to be understanding of, of that, those situations yeah. where a driver or team is upset and hope that whenever things calm down, everyone can see why this is decisions or rulings are made the way they have to be made sometimes. Um, or, you know, but yeah, I appreciate the, uh, acknowledging that and the, the, the positive, yeah. uh, you know, thoughts for people like, uh, the promoters like Adam Stewart with Create USA, uh, you know, I guess myself with Hunt the Front Series and, and all the others out there and how, how difficult it is. Um, sometimes, but, uh, but no, it's cool, cool insight there you had, um, on kind of the, the state of the sport from the driver's perspective. And, um, I find that that's kind of cool. I think like, like you're a crate guy and you're really, you know, and you, you've proven you can run supers if given the, the, the right situation, but it, it, like you said, it is really a hard jump to make and you're happy. sounds like doing what you're doing in the crate world and, and obviously really competitive. Um, so, uh, that's kind of a, an interesting take on it there. So, uh, uh, speaking of that though, um, being really competitive and, and the crate stuff, you got that, that big weekend coming up at Southern Raceway. You, um, I mean, what for your team, the way y'all came out swinging and, and won at Volusia and was, you know, uh, leading the way at East Bay there before uh, some bad luck. If you come down here, wrap up this winter series, you know, with hopefully maybe, or maybe a big win, maybe even a, a, that, that championship. What does that say about where you guys are, where you're headed for, for the, the rest of the season with this new team and just how big would that be for y'all? Well, it'd be huge. Uh, you know, it's a 10,000 win, uh, race right now. And, um, to, to have that opportunity to race for 10,000 is something we don't take for granted because I remember when a big great race was 2,500. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you look at that, that's a huge opportunity. So you don't want to look past that. Uh, second, 
you you're racing with crate racing usa so it's the it's the baddest of the bad i mean that's that's the guys you want to put your name against you know and, and see where you stack up so getting to come down there to do that with the best i'm looking forward to that um you know and if you can come out on top and win it it kind of puts a stamp on the season you know watch me you know watch for me and it may put a target on your back but it also puts people on notice too so it, it's more about making a statement uh this winter series you know i'm racing i will have raced 11 times before most people in my area have made a lap to even practice so you know you can't tell me that we're not moving ahead of those guys when i come back home because i've been making laps and you guys know laps and repetition is huge in racing so uh you know i just appreciate the opportunity to go racing during the winter and to work on my stuff and, and try to get better for the what we call the real season or the regular season and i'm really looking forward to getting back to milton i love that area uh, outside of the racetrack even uh I, I go down to uh well i've been to pensacola and destin while i've been at the racetrack you know it's an hour drive and just enjoyed myself down there so I, i'm looking forward to being back in the area and then i've always liked the racetrack uh was it was it cody smith that won 10 grand there one time for the southern yeah, I 100 he, i think uh, he's won yeah he won it i think at one point joseph won it um it, it's been did well, cody, jesse might know more more than I, i'm pretty sure cody uh, won one of those I, big did, races didn't he? yeah i think he got dq'd for fuel okay i don't <laughs> he may have i got dq <laughs> DQ'd for a carb spacer. <laughs> we were talking and about we that. There, there. Today. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I forgot about that when I came on yeah. the, and I told Joseph we were, we were going to He's like, you sure he's coming? Because I'm pretty sure he was out of here. <laughs> he said he was never coming back. <laughs> yeah. I tell Joseph I don't need his help uh, remembering I'm a liar. You know? but, but if I didn't go back to all the racetracks that I said I'd never go back to, I wouldn't have anywhere to race. You know, yeah. I'm never <laughs> going back to that place. <laughs> I'll be waiting on them to open the gate next week, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh man, that's good. Um, you, you mentioned a little bit about getting a head start for the season. What are your plans? Um, you guys going to do the, the crate USA stuff or hit and miss or what do you guys got planned for the definitely going to run crate USA? Um, uh, just, just, well, I mean, if you look at the races that they're scheduling, man, I mean, it's all, all fives, tens, uh, thousands to win. And we don't have an opportunity to race for that at home. And then they come home to where I'm from uh, a few times too. And they're going to have like 20, 21 knots. So I'm going to concentrate on that. May race a little bit in between, but just make sure that we're ready on those races. I mean, all the way ready, great tires and every nut's been touched on the car, you know? So that's, that's our plan is to concentrate on Crate USA. There you go. And don't blame me at all there. The Adam Stewart and the bunch at Crate Racing USA, they, uh, they do a great job. They've got a great series. Um, I feel like they, what what we are trying to do with the Hunt the Front Super Dirt series on the Super side, they accomplish with, um, and do a good job of you know for the crate guys. So right. uh, and and we work with them on you know obviously with this event at, at Southern Raceway and streaming it, and we do some other streaming things with those guys. So definitely uh, definitely can't say enough about them and the the events that they put on. But uh, Jesse, you got anything else for Matt before we uh, kind of wrap up the uh, episode I, here? Well, I do. I, just a couple little questions that I just had you know for one what did you start racing what was your first dirt car going back to when you started like what got you into the sport i had a i started in 2001 my dad owned race teams he owned two different late model teams and had drivers for them uh never raced himself and so uh i wanted to race and my dad made me like work on the car, put the motors in. You're going to work on their cars. And when you can do anything on the car, we'll talk about getting your car. So 2001, and I'm like, Dad, I'm ready. You know, I'm 14 years old, but I'm ready. And so I'm thinking, boy, I'm going to get me something new. I'm going to get <laughs> back then it was a GRT. I'm going to have me a brand new GRT. And he gets a 99, 1996 Rocket, which originally started as a bullet with leaf springs on the back. <laughs> and that was my first car and we won races with it I, believe it or not it was a really good car and uh I, I talked to mark richards about it and it was a mock balzano car so it actually had a lot of history hey, but that was my first car that's way before my time i don't know who that is oh really <laughs> he, he was the man he yeah. was the man 
Yeah, back in the day. All right. And my next question is, you know, you had this big win at, at, at Volusia. What has been your biggest, I guess, most, I, I don't know, prestigious win that you've uh, that you've scored uh, to date? Uh, prestigious probably by everyone else's standards would probably be Cochran. The 20,000? Uh, for, for the 20,000. That would probably be everyone's everyone's pick. Um, if, if it's my favorite win, it would be um, we had a race called the Fall Brawl at 411, and I had to have back surgery in 2006, so I, I quit racing until 2012. And uh, I, I bought a new CVR car in 2012, and which nobody had at the time. And we won the fall brawl, and it was my first win that I came back from back surgery. And during my back surgeries, they told me I'd never walk, never be able to have kids. And if I did, I wouldn't be able to play with them, hold them and stuff. And so um, I just never thought I'd get to experience that again. So that would be my favorite win. Yeah. And then another really cool one, uh, Dwayne Hama, who got injured in 2002, um, he, 2003 maybe, uh, he he was going to be probably one of the best to ever do it. I mean, he was beating Bloomquist, and Rick Eckert at the time was on top of his game. He was beating the best there was, and he was a young guy. And uh, he helped me some back then. And we did a tribute car for the age two which was his number and it looked just like his car. And he got to come to a cruiser race, a crate race in USA race at I-75. And we won the race with him there. That one's really special too. But those two uh, stick out in my mind for my favorite wins. And the, the Cochran race is awesome. You know, I never would have thought I would make a race that paid 20,000 to win, much less win it. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not taking that for granted or even like, you know, I'm I'm trying to respect it, but no, just sentimentally, the other two were more for me. I I could see. So that was your biggest monetary win was twenty grand. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we to me personally for our race team, like our biggest monetary win doesn't feel like the the best. We we uh, Joseph won the fifty grand at Chatham, or were they super B? Super B. Super B. Yeah, yeah, I was super, there. Yeah, so that was the biggest monetary win, but like. I mean, not to take away from it, that's freaking huge, but like kind of the same standards. Like, I feel like the the Powell family race oh. was a bigger win, or hell, making the feature at at the world was a yeah. uh, more you know to me meant more. I and mean, I'm not driving or anything, but just as a crew guy <laughs> or whatever, uh, yeah. it wasn't the biggest monetary win. It was just other races for some you know whatever reason. Anyway, yeah. so it's understandable that you have that's your biggest monetary win, but there's something that means more, you know. Yep. There you go. Uh Matt, I was gonna ask real quick before we uh before we finish up here. Do you remember I wanna say it was two thousand five, might have been two thousand four. I think it was two thousand five, going to um uh gosh, what's the name of that track now? I'm drawing a blank. Oglethorpe for the Oh uh, yeah, Savannah Young Gun, Coca Cola Young, Young Gun shootout. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if you remember that. That was the first time we met. Um yep. Jonathan was Drace. Joseph was he was and Jesse, they were little back then, but Joseph <laughs> Jonathan was racing in that the the fast track series, crate racing deal, and then the super late models. They had the some kind of young gun deal that was supposed to have yeah. NASCAR scouts and all kinds of stuff there. <laughs> there oh but, my god. Yeah. Do you remember do you remember that event? We won't talk bad about it, but do you remember that event? I remember it did, didn't go as planned. I don't think. No. So, so you can edit this out if you need to, but we were, we were at the pay window and this kid, I'm talking like this tall. I mean, he's like 10 years old. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we had to cut the purse. We didn't have the people that we thought we would have here and all this and that and was telling us all this stuff. And the guy goes, this kid, where's the dump truck? Where'd you park it at? And the guy goes, what dump truck? He goes, the dump truck you're using that hauled all the Vaseline in here because you guys are screwing us. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh my God. And and we just erupted, you know, but you know, what do you do? Yeah. It's funny. Funny. yeah. But I mean, I was I was horse laughing in 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 the line, but yeah, that was that was one yeah, of the man. funniest things that I remember about racing back then is remembering that little kid. 
I was 15 at the time when we were down there and he was, I even thought, man, he's young. I've got a, I've got a son his age now. And I'm like, Oh, that's not good. You know, <laughs> it was hilarious. That's probably, I'd imagine his, he might've heard his dad say that, uh, that, that little, you know, where's the dump truck, the Vaseline saying or whatever yeah. he said there at yeah. some point. <laughs> yeah. He might leave that yeah. in. I don't know. That, that's know. pretty good. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Um, so I'm sorry about creating the editing work, but nah, you're very good. good. <laughs> um, all right, Jesse, anything else you can think of? Oh, or yeah. uh, I, I think like that's we, it. I, yeah, I think Oh, ready to get uh get ready to go racing this weekend. Got looking right. forward to, right, to racing. That's I for appreciate sure. It, man. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate, I appreciate your time, it. Matt. We'll uh we'll see yep. you down here this weekend. Hopefully it's a it's a good weekend all around. We appreciate it and good luck. Hey, good luck. All I just right. hope Thanks, we outrun you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hope you don't, but I'll look forward to it with you. Absolutely. Looking forward to it.